My name is Jeff S. Spray. I am 44 years old and I live in South Texas with my wife and four kids. I have been a writer for pretty much all my life. Uh, nothing professional growing up. Uh, wrote a small little kids book in um, first grade, uh, but uh, that was just for a project. But uh, throughout high school, uh, even junior high, I started in junior high writing poetry, then uh, started dabbling a little bit in high school, and then uh, really in college, my one year in college I spent, one of my professors uh, told me that hey, you, you're a really good writer, you need to uh, start thinking about that. And that's when I really uh, gave it a thought uh, about doing it. So I, I went ahead and started writing little things, I mean, here and there. Uh, mainly short stories, uh, poetry, those sort of uh, <laughs> silly little things. Uh, but what motivates me to write is um, really just the reaction that I get from people. I mean, I love to see comments. I love to hear uh, the things that God has given me to say, what I've written on paper on their response to it, and how it's impacted them. Uh, not necessarily that, that I'm looking at for approval for myself, but just that when I write something, it's because God has impacted my life. And um, that comes out in a lot of my writing. So if you read anything that I've written, um, there's some, probably a great deal of personal aspect in it. And uh, whether experience or even, uh, especially within uh, my novel, there's a few uh, small jokes in there that uh, only uh, a handful of people uh, would get. Uh, but uh, to hear their reaction on, oh yeah, I remember that, or, or, or uh, just their, their reaction. And then if I write a blog about uh, something that's uh, really meaningful to me and how people reacted to that, it's uh, really encouraging to, to hear back from them and, and how God used that uh, to impact and change their lives. So uh, people's reaction is a big thing that uh, really gets me uh, energized to keep on writing. To me, a good story is something that is drawn from experience, but you expand upon it. Uh, for me, most of my writing, uh, my novel, uh, there's a couple of other pieces that I've written uh, that haven't yet to been published, but uh, I have a lot of dreams. And usually within a dream, something just stands out to me. And... Um, if you, you're a writer, if you've been a writer for any sort of period of time, you know that the the ideas come to you at the oddest hours. Uh, most of the time, especially for the dreams, you wake up and you're thinking, oh, wow, I've got this really great idea. And you think, oh, I'll remember, I'll remember, and you go back to sleep. But if you if you do that, if, if you kind of draw on that kind of uh, inspiration to do your writing, get up, write it down. Uh, it's worth getting out of bed and getting uncomfortable uh, because there's many ideas that are lost in space just because I didn't take the time to write it down. But uh, that is part of what I feel makes a good story is, is just drawing on uh, on the ideas that you're given and then expanding upon it, uh, especially personal experience. Um, and there's always a certain level of experience that uh, can be twisted. I mean, if you're not, uh, for instance, you're trying to write about a doctor, I mean, but you've never been a doctor. I mean, obviously there's studying you could do. I mean, you could do a lot of research, um, but there's a certain aspect of it uh, that you can just draw from your personal experiences. I mean, I've uh, worked into retail. I've uh, worked in insurance. I've been a truck driver. And just taking little what you have done and applying the certain instance to it uh, can be a really good uh, source for a story. And uh, especially being a trucker, there's a lot of stories there. Uh, unfortunately, some that I really can't uh, put into writing. Uh, but uh, just drawing on your experience, taking what you know and learning more about it and then expanding upon it. Uh, there's really no bad idea. Uh, there's just uh, unformed ideas. 
Uh, so when you take uh, what you know, apply what you can learn, that's what's uh, going to make a really good story for you. For me, growing up, I always wanted to be a doctor. That was the big thing, and uh, I'm not exactly sure, well, I kind of know where it came from, uh, but especially early on, uh, just something that seemed really neat to me. I mean, I was one of the kids who enjoyed going to the doctor. I was never afraid. Um, I mean, of course, you, as moms and maybe the nurses and the doctors have discussed, there's nothing wrong with your son. And... Uh, just a little cough, it's like, oh, or a fake fever, not necessarily to get out of school, but to go see the doctor, because I always thought doctors were really cool. Uh, so, sorry, Mom, <laughs> if you're seeing this, that uh, I'm sure you've ran a couple of those where uh, you had a rush from uh, the, your work to take me over to the doctor for a 99.9 .9 fever, uh, faked fever, that um, turned out just to be your son who was interested in being a doctor. Um, but... Um, the real interest, uh, although tragically, was the passing of my father. Um, he passed away from cancer in uh, 84. I was nine years old. So I was determined to not see that happen again. And I wanted to be able to explore. And uh, even my mom, she, I'm not sure, was there somebody in the family had gotten me a medical book. I mean, a really good medical book. Uh, for one of my birthdays. I think it was a birthday or a Christmas and um, because I expressed such an interest in becoming a doctor and I read through it and I studied it and um, even about the condition, uh, the cancer condition my father had had. Uh, but that's really what I wanted to be uh, growing up. Uh, it didn't turn out that way. Certain events in my life kind of steered me away from that but um, it's all God's part of a God's plan. Uh, during that period of time in my life, that's where he wanted me. And, but it led me to other situations uh, to where he has me today. And that I'm grateful for. So far uh, to date, I've written for five, six, six children's books, uh, two of which are uh, going to be due out in 2020. Uh, four are published, and I've written a novel, uh, that's been published and I'm currently right now writing my second novel and I'm three quarters of the way through that. Uh, the books are uh, children's prayer books uh, entitled uh, Elisa the Curious Snail and um, thank you to Is Is Isabella Media who has uh, taken me on as one of their clients and um, have put me in a really uh, great position to get uh, Elisa out there. And Alyssa came from an uh, idea of my daughter's. I was in the middle of uh, editing my novel, The Five Bar Gate. And um, I was really flustered with it because, I mean, it's just taken so long. It was really tedious to have to edit something and uh, to cut out parts and to make changes and stuff. And when I just was had it one night and I was done. And um, I listened to my wife and daughter talking, and uh, she was young at the time. It was 2016, so what was she, seven or eight? And um, she was talking to my mom about having a story uh, about that she had never uh, that she never had a story written for her. And they discussed, well, ask Daddy to write a story for you. And she came over and said, Daddy, will you write me a story? And I was, I was like, okay, what do you want it to be about? And she thought about it for a while, and she goes, I want it to be about a snail. And the rest is history. So, uh, what, probably three or four hours later, I had Alyssa the Curious Snail written. And it sat on the shelf for a while, and um, I had uh, come across Isabella Media uh, working through writing a blog column for them. And uh, somehow they got word of uh, me having the novel, uh, written and so uh, they asked about it. I sent it to them and for that and the rest is history and then in the middle of producing uh, excuse me uh, Getting the word out about Alyssa. I attended a, a book signing for another author and she introduced me to her publisher which uh, got on board with publishing the five guard gate so uh, those are my published works right now and uh, but 
uh, my favorite one. That's like asking to choose between your children. Um, I'm really fond of the one I'm writing now. It's called uh, Little Reminders of Who I Am. And it's it's a step away from what I've done. You get the children's book, The Five Bar Gate is more uh, suspense. Uh, this one's a kind of a love story. And I'm excited. I'm writing it and, and uh, I find myself just not having that passion again uh, to get into it. So right now, uh, I'm in the middle of my favorite one. I guess that's what you always feel that the one you're working on right now is your favorite. But, um, hopefully that'll be out by around, uh, 2020. And also two additional Alyssa books, uh, will be coming out for, uh, 2020. In terms of becoming a better writer, I really feel as many resources as you can have behind you are better. Uh, you can't always just rely on what you know or what you think you know. Uh, you can always get better. It doesn't matter. I mean, even I'm sure even Stephen King still studies up on a lot of the stuff when he's writing. And um, uh, one of my mentors is Max Licato. I love reading his stuff, and I'm sure that he still does studying. Uh, to get across uh, some of his ideas and uh, I think the more resources that you have and uh, the biggest thing is coming across being professional and that comes with one doing your homework uh, don't assume uh, an example would be that uh, within the five bar gate there's a certain event that happens uh, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give it away but uh, in the course of that event, there are certain things that needed to take place and certain conditions that needed to apply. And I had to do, I did probably a week's worth of studying uh, just to get that right. Uh, I wasn't able to do that in the initial writing process, but uh, through the editing process, I spent a good week just on uh, that chapter, uh, trying to get it right, getting the information correct, and making sure that someone who was in the particular profession that this addressed uh, wouldn't call me out on it and say, hey, look, no, that's not right. Uh, I try to get it very as accurate as I can. Uh, in addition to being in a professional, I was always making sure, I mean, through that editing process. And part of doing your homework, but I mean, also having the resources, certain uh, editing programs. I mean, for me, I use three editing software programs uh, through every single word that I write. Uh, the first one, of course, I mean, if you're working within Word, uh, and the the spell checker with there, but that, I mean, that only catches so much. I mean, if you're working with uh, Word spell checker, you're really, really missing a lot. And so I use uh, the professional versions of Grammarly and uh, Ginger. So both of those, uh, if one, if Microsoft Word misses one, Grammarly catches it. If Grammarly misses it, then Ginger catches it. And so, and they all work together to give uh, me a nice, polished, uh, almost ready to print uh, art, uh, uh, piece. And even with my freelance writing, I use all, all of those. And uh, there's other smaller little uh, things that you can use, uh, especially if you're working within a freelance writing. Um, but if we're really just talking about novels, just having a nice polished piece and having those spell checkers and doing your homework, uh, not being afraid to take an extra long time on two paragraphs just because you want to get it accurate. And uh, never be afraid to ask questions. Uh, and uh, that's what the internet's there for. So, I mean, it could give uh, you an experience level uh, that could be close to almost expert uh, without even stepping a shoes in uh, the person who actually does it. I spend so much time writing, it's hard to really contemplate of what I do when I'm not writing. Um, but one of the things I really like to do is cook. Uh, in fact, while I'm making these videos, uh, I'm cooking dinner for the family, so that's one thing I really love to do. Uh, again, one of the things I've always enjoyed doing, uh, like I had said earlier in one of my videos, was uh, that my father had passed away when I was nine. 
And so shortly thereafter, uh, my mom never remarried, so uh, it was kind of, as the oldest child, my responsibility to take uh, on some of the responsibilities of the house, and one of those uh, was cooking. And so I learned to cook at a pretty young age, and so, uh, but it's always been something I'd love to do. Uh, it, it gets all part of the creative process. I mean, writing's all about creating, and so is uh, food. Uh, it's rare that I'll buy anything pre-made. Everything is fresh, so I mean, every meal that I prepare is uh, generally from scratch. So uh, that's one thing I really love uh, to do that when I'm not writing. I think they enjoy it. Um, my wife is uh, always the first one to read anything that I've written, anything, uh, whether it be a chapter, uh, uh, a verse, a post, uh, ch a short story, whatever I mean, she's always the first one who gets to read it, so I think she enjoys having that uh, privilege. <laughs> I know sometimes I catch her at the wrong time, uh, hey babe, read this, uh, and tell me what you think. And uh, a lot of times she's had to put a book down or pause a movie or whatever just to uh, get through one of the projects that I had been working on. And um, I know sometimes it's a little uh, uh, difficult for her, uh, but I mean, I think she enjoys the process. And uh, my kids, uh, you know, how uh, teenagers are. And uh, oh, yeah, you're writing, Dad, okay, that's cool. And usually that's cool. It's a, uh, what I get from it, but uh, my daughter enjoys it because her children's books and her teachers know about it. And uh, one of the characters in the, the Alyssa series, uh, Francine, is the uh, uh, main adult character in the books and uh, is pretty much modeled after her. Uh, if you've seen a picture of Audrey and picture of Francine next together, you you just see that Francine is Audrey, and uh, she really enjoys uh, enjoys that part of it. Uh, but they, they're behind me, they're supportive, uh, they love uh, the fact that I, uh, I'm a published author and it's exciting to them to see uh, a lot of the success that uh, these books, uh, whether it be Alyssa or even The Five Bar Gate, are bringing. And um, just to see where I've come even just the last two years on uh, how uh, successful uh, writing has uh, brought us. And so I think they really enjoy that. And uh, they're very encouraging, uh, especially my wife. She's my uh, biggest cheerleader. So uh, again, that goes back to the first uh, the first question that we asked about uh, what motivates me. Uh, and my kids and uh, uh, my wife, Carolyn, uh, she's very supportive and uh, very encouraging uh, for me to keep on writing. For me, I think the biggest surprise that that, that hit me was, uh, I don't want to say simplicity, because that makes it seem like it was easy to do. It, 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 it was a challenge, but I mean, once I got determined and said that, okay, this is what I want to do, uh, just how, and getting that focus, and then all of a sudden something just clicked, and it's just like, oh, I can do this. And um, I had never dreamed of writing a children's book. I mean, I had written... Like I said, most of my life, like poetry and short stories and stuff. And it took that college professor to tell me that, hey, look, uh, you have, you, you've got something here. And so when I began to really focus on writing, uh, then uh, the novels came out. And um, once I got looking to that and then started the editing process and said, oh, I can never write a children's book. No, no, not me. And um, having that challenge from my daughter... Uh, said, oh, I'll give it a shot, and then once I had the first one written, it's like, oh, okay, I can do this. And then another one came, and then another one came, and then the, now there's six of them out there. Uh, four published, two are all coming out in 2020. Uh, so I, I'm excited about this, and just excited about where that has gone from that, and then uh, Isabel Mitty wanted me to start writing uh, children's blogs and stuff like that, and then uh, coming up with the idea every week, it was just... Sometimes you'll be like, I have no idea what to write about. And then you just come up with a little hint of an idea, and then you start writing it, and then it just flows. And that's the biggest surprise for me, is on how um, once you get one little idea, and how the next one comes, and then the next idea comes, even in my novel writing, um, I'll hit a stumbling block. It's like, oh, I don't know where to take the story from there. 
and you sit about it then one little idea clicks and that turns into an idea and then it just blows up from there and um, not again I'm not using the word simple because uh, it's not it's not simple it's uh, having the determination and then uh, following through with that determination and seeing what that'll do for you uh, that's that was the biggest surprise to me This is the exciting part because I get to show you something. This here is Jeff Bray's first book. It was a project we had in our first grade class. And if you could see here, uh, I think it might be backwards just because of the way the camera is. Uh, March 1983. I was eight years old and I uh, believe it was the first grade that I wrote this. Uh, may have been a little later. I'm not 100%, I don't 100% remember, but I think it was a first grade. Uh, eight years old would seem to be pushing it best that. Um, but um, I just remember, loved writing it. I mean, it's fully illustrated, as you can see. Fully illustrated, and um, uh, the first uh, project I had ever done. Uh, bound, the teacher had it bound, it looked a lot better than it does now. Uh, but it was an exciting process. I really enjoyed doing this. This is when I, I knew I, that I was going to love writing. And um, still had the dream and aspiration to be a doctor. But I knew that there was something, uh, just something about writing that I loved. And um, that's the first one. So if you ever, uh, I become big and famous, and there's ever like an Easter egg on, on what was Jeff's first book, uh, it's not Alyssa the Curious Snail. It's The Tale of Katie the Kitten. So remember that. Well, for me, the first of our the the first novel, the Five Bar Gate, I wrote that through a program um, writing challenge online called uh, NanoRimo, which is a national uh, novel writing month, uh, which takes place in November of every year. Uh, that I took that in uh, 2016, and um, a friend of mine, uh, Jeremy White. Uh, there you go. Shout out to you, Jeremy. <coughs> Excuse me. And I. Uh, challenge each other. Uh, we both knew that we had gifts that God had given us and that we wanted to explore those gifts. And um, just the determination to, to get started and just to do it. I mean, we're done with excuses. There's the reason why we're not succeeding in the things we want is because we're not doing them. And so I bound to determine, okay, this year I'm going to start writing. And then I came across NaNoWriMo. And um, it's like, 30, it's, it, what it is, is it's a challenge to write a 50,000 word novel in 30 days through the month of November. And so you start fresh on November 1st, and um, by 30 days later, you ha need to have a fully completed, uh, written, not edited, just written, uh, a novel. And that's where the Five Bar Gate uh, came, was birthed. Uh, I did have an outline, I kind of had an idea, I've had the characters, and I knew where I wanted to go with the story. Um, so it was somewhat outlined when I began it, but um, it was crazy because, I mean, I was working still during this time. There was a little brief time where I was out of work for, uh, for uh, a month or so, um, but for the most part I was working and then coming home and then on my days off and uh, in the evenings I was writing. So uh, in order to get 50,000 in 30 days, it's uh, 1,667 words per day. And so just trying to hit that target every single day, and it takes a lot of determination. Um, but within that, um, I wrote that uh, within a month, and uh, and then it took a lot, lot longer to edit, because uh, it was written in 2016. I didn't really get the full edit done until 2018. Um, but that was because when my publisher, when I finally found the publisher, uh, it kind of put uh, me up against the wall and I had a deadline. Uh, that's another motivational tool for you, a deadline. Uh, that'll get anybody motivated. Uh, but uh, with uh, the literal reminders of who I am, uh, it's November now, I'm not sure when this will air, uh, would be placed up, but uh, it's November right now. And uh, it's November 20th, and um, 20 days into, I took the NaNoWriMo challenge this year. And so, so far I've got 36,000 words and uh, 16 chapters written. Uh, not as far as I want it to be, but um, the story's moving along pretty well. And so uh, I 
that, that's my plan from here on out is uh, November of every year uh, to write a new novel, uh, have it completed by December 1st, and uh, their suggestion is to sit on it a month to get your mind clear and get yourself away from it in the beginning of January of uh, the following of that next year to begin your editing process. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'll do that this year. Uh, it worked for the first one. Uh, we'll just see how I feel at the end. Uh, because I really want to get this one out to the public. Uh, as I said earlier, this is my favorite piece that I've ever worked on. And so within that, within a, a month, every year, November, uh, that's my plan to have a new novel. So how long does it take me? 30 days. Uh, it take a little longer to write, to edit it, but I mean to have it written 30 days. Well, seeing that I am a full-time freelance writer, most of my time is at home now. I no longer have a full-time job. Uh, there's medical reasons behind it uh, that has uh, taken me from the job that I used to do. Uh, so I'm pretty much a full-time writer now. So from the time I wake up till the time I'm cooking supper, and even beyond that, I'm usually writing something, whether it be a uh, freelance project that I'm working on with a client, uh, writing a children's story for Isabella Media, coming up with new ideas, uh, hopefully new ideas for uh, Alyssa coming up uh, for 2021, and then uh, working on my novel. Uh, between all those, I mean, uh, there's really not a time that I'm not writing. So uh, I try to maintain so much of a schedule. Uh, I'm usually up uh, no later than uh, the kids leaving the house uh, and the wife taking the kids to school, which is about 7.30. So I rest a little bit, then I'm up usually by 8, uh, eat some breakfast, and uh, get to writing by 9 o'clock. And um, the, one of the benefits of being a full-time freelance writer is that, I mean, you're not on the time clock, so you can schedule your day as you need to. Um, so uh, I take breaks when I need to, and uh, go pick up the kids when I need to, attend school functions when I need to. Uh, I have that freedom uh, to be able to do that, so I don't really have a set schedule, um, and I try to keep to to writing during the time that I have and uh, being productive. Uh, but uh, I don't really have a, a a detailed set schedule. Well, for me, uh, I guess the biggest thing is uh, music. I always have to have uh, music playing. Uh, generally, it's, uh, let me see if I can get this here for you, if you can hear it. Uh, jazz. I love jazz music, uh, especially instrumental jazz. Uh, I like the oldies, but uh, this here, the, that's, I believe it's Harry Connick. Yeah, Harry Connick Jr. Uh, I really love his stuff. He's been uh, one of my favorites since high school. And uh, just, a, it's really upbeat and, and, and to me it's really keeps me focused and inspirational. Uh, there's some jazz music that has uh, 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 lyrics to it but uh, kind of straight from that when I'm writing because uh, it can get a little distracting. Other, uh, see what else what's coming up next. Jim Cullen. Being in South, South Texas, uh, San Antonio. Uh, they used to have a, a, a little place called The Landing down on uh, the Riverwalk in downtown San Antonio and Jim Cullum, uh, that's the name of the place, Jim Cullum's Landing and um, they always had jazz music. Carol and I were lucky enough to go down there one night and um, experience it right before they closed uh, the Riverwalk location and um, just fell in love with that type of stuff so I listen, I have a lot of uh, Jim Cullum jazz band on uh, my playlist. Uh, another one I really enjoy Miles Davis. Who doesn't like Miles Davis? Uh, so, uh, between a lot of the jazz music that I've got, those are just three of the sample. I've got hundreds of songs on that playlist. But uh, it's calming, helps me stay focused, and um, uh, it's one of the quirks I always have to have uh, jazz music playing or uh, some type of music uh, playing in the background as I write. And so, uh, that's it. That's, that's uh, my most interesting writing quirk.